going to talk for a little bit about the overall concept of what friction really is. And to help, I'm going to draw a little picture. This is uh, you, uh, and you're hanging out here, and your legs are equal length, and you're standing on the ground, and uh, you're wearing your super cool red shoes because it's that kind of day. And uh, while you're standing here, if you're just standing, um, we don't worry too much about friction. Um, obviously, any sort of sideways motion and friction would become an issue. And so if we imagine that you want to take a step forward, uh, what we need to do is, is look at the interaction between your feet and the floor. And so if we zoom in on this, um, it might surprise you, but hopefully not, um, that if you zoom in enough, that smooth looking floor is not actually all that smooth. In fact, it's got all these little peaks and valleys um, just because of the material and how it's put together. It really, every surface is going to be like that. Nothing's ever going to be just a perfectly straight, smooth line. Even you know a sheet of ice is going to have some sort of texture to it. Uh, and that just comes down to the fact that these things are made out of molecules and atoms and and none of that is is perfectly linear so we see this ground and we can see how it's it's sort of rough uh, now we're gonna look at uh, your shoe which is you know sitting on the ground and so here's your shoe and your shoe similarly is not actually all that smooth on the bottom and it's not just because of the tread um, you know, here's your here's your leg uh, it's not just because of the the tread of the shoe but also because of the material that it's made out of, that it's not perfectly smooth. If you zoom in on anything enough, you'll see that there's some texture, there's some roughness to it. And so uh, when we go back to considering our forces, you know, you've got this force of gravity down on the shoe and, and the normal force of the ground supporting it. Um, as you try to take a step forward, what's happening is your leg is sort of pulling your shoe backwards. And that's hopefully going to sort of propel you forward and, and what's actually happening is in these peaks and valleys where the shoe is actually interacting with the floor you, know, you could imagine right here there's probably some sort of interaction that the shoe is able to push with this horizontal force against the ground the ground therefore as per Newton's third law is going to supply an equal and opposite force in the other direction and so at any of these places where you have contact you get these sort of horizontal forces and you get the reaction forces and you're hoping that the net reaction here is that yeah you've got enough to go on and you're able to propel yourself forward that the net force is uh, enough to accelerate you forward and yes the ground backwards as we talked about before um, but it's only possible because of that friction here between your shoe and the ground if we look at another circumstance where you have maybe a very smooth surface and maybe that is a sheet of ice or something like that and maybe you've got your super fancy uh, you know slippery dress shoes or something um, not good for uh, for any sort of work um, when we look at this now we see that the the shoe is uh, is much smoother the ground is very smooth and so when we put these two things together we don't have nearly as many of those peaks and valleys and so when you try to apply sort of that horizontal force and you try to push to the left um, there's nowhere really maybe like a little bit here you get like a little bit of a force but as your leg is pulling your shoe to the left the ground is not really resisting that pull and therefore your shoe is just gonna slip off in that direction and you're gonna end up falling and that's the idea of you know a slippery surface is one where you're not able to achieve much friction going back to this example uh, the coefficient of friction here would be some you know greater than zero uh, value for sure because in this case you are generating a decent amount of friction and what that coefficient really means is uh, as you see from the equation for friction which is the you know friction force is equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force um, the, the coefficient, it, it is a coefficient, it's a multiplier of the normal force to tell you how much of that normal force is going to translate into 
static or kinetic friction. And so a, a rougher interaction between two surfaces that have more of those peaks and valleys and, and a little bit less give and less ability for them to slide against each other is going to have a higher coefficient. Whereas one that is more like our ice, our coefficient here is going to be very, very small, which means we're going to have a very, very small resistance force of friction, and therefore it's going to be very easy for things to slide on this. And that may be good, or in the case of trying to like walk across ice, it could be troublesome. So the, uh, the, the overall point here, um, think about friction as being this resistance between these two rough surfaces. Another good example of this would be if you look at your hands. You know, we, we like to think about our hands are nice and smooth, and maybe you've got, you know, hand lotion and things like that. Keep your hands nice and smooth, um, or lots and lots of uh, hand sanitizer, whatever it might be. Um, you think about your hands as being very, very smooth, but if you rub them together or something like that, you can, you can feel that friction and you can actually feel some heat being generated there as you're getting this this rough interaction between the uh, the peaks and valleys of your hand and it's kind of gross to think about <laughs> peaks and valleys of your hand um, but you know it, it's true and it's there and you know you rub your hands together enough and you can end up getting uh, some dirt and things like that out so um, that's, uh, you know, again, looking at the, the sort of roughness of two materials tells you a little bit about the, um, you know, frictional interaction. So there you go.